Right, in this video, I am gonna pretend I know something about fuel burning heaters. I do know a little bit, but I'm not an expert, but I'm gonna share my knowledge with you now. Right then, should be a quick video, no. Right, we are gonna show you lots of things. We are gonna show you where the fuel burning heater is, also called park heater, also called auxiliary heater. So FBH is fuel burning heater. Um, Webasto, Herbsbacker, um, all sorts of names for them, some of them brand names, some of them what they do. We're going to show you to look where you've got one. We are going to show you if you've got one, how you can turn it on, how you can set timers, how you can use your phone, how you can use the remote. We're going to show you if you've got one and you haven't got a remote, we're going to show you how to reprogram your remote. We're going to show you where the remote module lives. We're going to do some fault finding. We're going to explain to you if it's not coming on what could be the reasons. You've got to have your doors shut, your bonnet shut, quarter of a tank. We're going to show you how to change your battery in your Abasto remote. Right, so let's 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 start. Let me start. So, oh, handkerchief's not going to help. Wrong pocket. Right, we are going to show you first where it is in the car so you can go and have a look. So we are on our Range Rover Sport L494, but it should be the same if you have a Range Rover L405. So come this way. So we have a lovely V8 supercharged, because we're just flash, aren't we, Tyler? Yep. Yes. Um, not really. <laughs> we got it cheap. Um, crashed. Now, crashed, yes. Um, so this is the this is the bad boy here, and it's sort of tucked in this back corner behind this shock absorber mount. Um, and these are the pipes that carry water to and from it to take into the cabin to warm you up nicely. Um, so... Now we've looked. Now, interestingly, on the Discovery Threes and Discovery Fours, they had them on the diesels. Now, diesel engines take a lot longer to warm up to warm up the block when the water's going around the engine um, than petrol. So I was surprised and delighted, in equal measure, to see that on our petrol, this thing must warm up in no time. Five liters of petrol burning. You would think it would get warm quick, but. So, so they have two purposes, these fuel burning heaters. One is, the more conventional thing is, on a cold morning, you get out there, you start your car, you drive it, it warms it up as you're driving. But the deluxe feature, if you like, is you can actually set a timer to warm the car up for you before you get out there, which is good for you because you get into a nice warm car and you don't have to demist and scrape the windows. And it's good for the car because the engine starts a little bit warmer, which is good for emissions and good for wear on the engine and stuff. So, right, so that's where it is, that's where you'll have one. Right, let's go and have a look. Right, let's have a look, how can you turn this, this box of tricks and wizardry? So obviously, it is burning your fuel. So if you've got a diesel car, it has a separate little tap into your diesel tank. It sucks the diesel out of your tank burns it in its own little super wizardry little combustion chamber. It's got its own little exhaust and heats the water. So we've got a petrol car, so we have a petrol one and it's got its own feed to the petrol tank and it's got its own little petrol pump. Right, so how do you turn this on? So if you start your car and it's cold enough, um, I don't know, on the Discovery, it was if it's below five degrees or below it would switch on, and I think it's probably similar. And you won't need to do anything about it. You won't even know it's working. Um, you might see the odd puff of smoke come out. Right, but if you want to use it in another way, let's have a look. So if you want it to come on before you get in the car, there are, we've, we've listed five ways you can get this to come on. So you slide down here a bit, Tyler. So the first way we'll look at is you can go onto the screen and on the dashboard on the screen, you can turn it on. Now, you can, when you've got the ignition on, it gives you the timing option. So you can set it and you can set it for one day or seven days. So that on Mondays, it comes on at this time. And, and you can set it actually two cycles a day so that you could get it to come on in the morning before you go to work. And in the evening, while it's sat at work, you could get it to come on. So you come out to a nice warm car. Um, you can also, if you turn the ignition off, you can turn it on manually. So if you're sat in a car park of a beach watching the sun go down, all romantic like Tyler there, you can set it to manual so you can actually turn the um, 
and we'll show you how to do that, right? You can also use a key fob thingy. Obviously it's not a key fob because there's no key in it, but so I've called it a key fob thingy. And you can press the buttons cleverly labeled on and off um, to turn it on. And, and interestingly, there are a couple of types of these. Um, there's a T91 and a T90. And we're gonna show you how to pair this. So maybe you've got a heater, but maybe the previous owner didn't give you one of these keys. I will show you how you can buy one of these off the internet. And then when you're having your breakfast, you can zap your car and get it to warm up for you. So we will talk about key fog programming. Right, we will also talk, oh, this was painful, wasn't it, Tyler? Yeah. This is, yeah. yes. We haven't published that video yet, have we? So <laughs> there is an in-control app from Land Rover, which is pretty good. I, um, it's pretty good and you can from your phone you can you can get it up and you can press the on button I've got it here and you can select your car and you can go on remote and we'll show you how to do all that and you can turn your car on right you can also get aftermarket it's like secondary so Wabasto do one called Thermo Cool 4 TC4 and you can retrofit that to your car we're not going to cover that, but I will explain it and how it works. Right then, so then I will just, be, I'll finish the lesson and then we'll get into the car. Right, now there are certain factors that affect whether, if you think there's something wrong with your heater and it's not doing something, it's probably one of these. You need to have a quarter of a tank of fuel because no one wants to go out to a warm car where it's used all the fuel up. That wouldn't be good, would it, Tyler? No. No. Um, it also looks at the external temperature. If the temperature is less than 12 degrees C, it will come on. If you're, if you're more than 12 degrees C, it will not turn on. And if you've turned it on, it will actually turn itself off at 15. So it's a bit complicated that, but I think that's clear. Um, also, it will only warm up the car to the settings you've selected, I believe. This bit I'm making up, I haven't tested this. So make sure you've got your climate set to the temperature you want because obviously it's not going to know what temperature to warm it up to right make sure you've got the doors shut because it's clever enough that it doesn't want to heat up the planet so if you've got your doors open it doesn't want to just pump heat into the car and out the car um, for some of the remotes they want your car also to be locked i think it's a safety security thing so so on some, if it's not working, make try locking your car. Crash. So um, if Tyler was just reading the instructions, I said, well, apparently it turns off if you crash. So I don't think the temperature of your cabin is going to be a major concern <laughs> to you having just crashed. But if it is, that's why, as a safety measure. Now there is one more I will put on here, Tyler, that I've just thought of as I've been yakking away. Battery. Now. We had a situation yesterday, we were testing this, and we came back to a beautifully warm car. We had to go up to the other warehouse, didn't we, Tyler, and sort something yeah. back. We thought, we'll leave it running. We come back half an hour later to a warm car with a flat battery. So, but we knew the battery was low already because this car doesn't get driven much. So just be aware, these, these units can flatten your battery and there's no battery protection in there. So make sure if you're testing this, you have a good battery or it's on charge or driven regularly. Right, we're in the car and because it's technology, you seem to be able to do this stuff better. So Tyler's on it. He's got fit. He has got fingers. Um, oh, yeah, your eyes are better than mine and his fingers are better than mine. So, right. So let's do, what should we do first, Tyler? Should we do, do you want to do the romantic car park mode setting or do you want to do the driving? Let's do as you'd probably do it. Yeah. Right. Oh, keys. <laughs> Epic fail. We now have keys. Right then, go for it, Tyler. Put the ignition on so he hasn't pressed the brake because we're inside the garage, so we don't want to do it. Now, one thing to note, first of all, is that 14 degrees C temperature thing there. That is going to be key to our thing. So this isn't going to be too warm to stop, to start, because we're above the 12. So we'll have to put the car outside. But it's going to be, it's going to be more comfortable for us to show you the menus. So, right then, Tyler, so please show us. This is where you start. It is the very last. There. Now, I guess if you haven't got this menu, you probably haven't got a timed heater. So, um, 
that's what you're looking for. So if you've got this little badger here, you probably don't even need to look for it. So let's, and then it greets you with this screen here, which gives us two options, basically. We've got the seven day setting or the single event setting. Now you will notice here, the manual heat and the manual vent. Now, actually one thing I should say is that although we're talking about the fuel burning heater, this system will actually, if you're in a hot climate, it won't cool the car because you need your engine running to run your compressor on your aircon pump, but it will blow some air in to keep some air circulating to stop it being quite as hot. So it's also useful as a vent setting. So that's what the manual event, and obviously we haven't got any event going to stop. Now, we will show you in a minute how to access these, we'll call them romantic car park settings, won't we, Tyler? Keep yes, nice warm. yes. Although Great. some car park activities, you'll be warm enough. Right then. This is no timers. Seven. Now the, the key here is that, it will, if I point the camera in the right place, climate operates for 30 minutes from the set time. So on all these, all you're doing is the start time. Now you can't just press go and it will be instantly hot. It takes, it in the disco, it took a good 10 minutes to even start to get some heat. Yeah. So bear in mind, this isn't a sort of instant Oof. heat the microwave youth generation it's more for us older people Tyler that are used to waiting for things to happen coals on the fire. yes it, it is like a bit that. like coals on the fire right so you you know, he's gone into single event so we could just set a one-off event so say we're one. say we're heading off on holiday early in the morning and we want to set it to come on at six o'clock in the morning or 10 50 in the morning um, and you can set the day and it will sure enough come on and you have to press OK and that should be that that yeah. locked okay and it even which is handy it tells you it's got a single event timer and it tells you the seven day. now we could probably add also a seven day so this is when we're going on holiday or whatever this is our special single event but we could also set up a seven day timers no time and then it gives you this screen and then for each day you, you can actually, I think, select all week or all and do a, to save you time. Or you can go into each one. If you go into each one, Tyler, can you just, just, you can slide into one. Now bear in mind this, so this isn't an on and an off time. You've got a time of one and a time of two. This is, it will go on at this time for half an hour. And if you set this one, so this could be before you go to work. And the second one is it will set it, the system will shut down because we haven't got the engine running. Right, hold on, let's just turn the engine on again. Yeah. So yeah, and if you save that, that will save that. So we've got them all off at the moment, but that's how you would go in and set those off. Right then, Ty, if you turn the ignition off and show us how to get to the romantic car park setting. So there we go, okay, ignition's off. off. Right, but we should better, right, so you can turn your infotainment turn system on. So for press, ignition. Yeah, so no ignition, no dials, no. Just press this little button here. I can manage that button, Ty. I'm all right on. Oh, it's going to shut down in three minutes. Go on. Um, and now you'll notice we have got the manual heat and manual vent. So I guess we're... So let's uh, let's go manual heat, Tyler. We, we... Right. Come on, baby. Oh, it's doing it. I can hear the vent going on. So, yeah, and I can hear it blowing. I doubt you can hear it. So that has actually started it. So, and in fact, there you go. And the stop event has now, so it doesn't sort of, it doesn't tell you it's on so much, does it, Tyler? No. And you should have nice little flames. The Tesla, have you seen that on the Tesla? No. It's got a, a romantic mode oh, and it puts yeah. flames on the screen, Tyler. I could do with some flames. Land Rover a little more corporate, but so yeah, you, you know it's going by the fact you've got the stop event here. And we can start to feel it now and it should be starting up. Although it might not because it's only at 14 degrees C. So it probably won't start. But it, it's doing what it thinks it needs to do. Right then. And obviously manual vent would likewise... It wouldn't start the fuel burning heater. But it would just blow fresh air to cool us down. And it is indeed blowing fresh air at us. Which is quite cool. Right. How do you stop the manual... Interesting, Tyler. You can't... There's no stop event... I guess you just have to toggle it, do you? 
That's interesting why they do it like that. That is weird. Right, so there we go. We have done how to turn it on from the screen. There's no more controls you could do on screen. Let's get out of here, Tyler, and let's try the remote. Right, so we know how to do it from the car and all the time, but if we're just going out, and we know we're going out in 20 minutes and we want to start the car, we can, from the kitchen window, or any window, um, you can turn it on with one of these remotes. Ta -da. Right, so you need to pair these to the car. It's got a little battery there on this one. CR2032, which is the same as the main key fob battery. So if your main key fob ran out and you had one of these as well, you could swap the battery out of this into the other one. Right. Actually, all you do is you press the on button and it lights up like so to let you know it's doing this thing. And you may well, if you go into the car, we might hear some whirring. And we might not though, Tyler, because we've got the boot open. So it, oh no, it is. It's going. It's going. No, it's not. No. Um, but if you've Stop. got your, you know, again, if you've met all these prerequisites here and you've got fuel, it will start going. It, but again, it won't be instant, right? And then if you want to turn it off, you can press the off button and it will give you a little red flash to say I'm turning it off. So that's what you should get happening, right? So what, how is this communicating and what is it communicating to? And if you want to add more of these, or you want to add, you've got your car without one, how do you add one? Right, so the remote box is hidden. Right then, let me see if I can get this right. So there is a panel you can move off here. Right, pass me the camera, Tyler, yep. Yeah. So, in this rear corner, right under there, and I'll have to arrow it, it's, it's right up, yeah, right up where Tyler's pointing his red stick. Um, it's sort of hard to see, but that's where they, now why have they put it all the way in the back here? The reason is, grab the camera toilet. The reason is there is a antenna. I think it's in this window yeah, or something. Yeah. So there's a, there is a, can you see it? Does it help if I illuminate a little? So there we go. There's an antenna here, which obviously picks it up as you're doing it. That module then tells the module to start, right? So if you've got a key, Tyler, what is the deal? So we have bought a new one. Let's go and grab the new one and see if we can pair it to the car. Right, so we have bought a new one of these off eBay. I can't remember how much it cost. And I think they're called T... Now there's two types. There's a T91 and a T90. One's bigger than the other. But they all work in the same way. So you can cross fertilize them and stuff. So, right, so let's have a look what this does for me, Tyler. So, in theory, this should not work with my car. Should not work with so any car. Let's, let's have a look, let's see if it does anything. So, the light comes on. Ah, now interestingly, look, it's flashing red. Right? Now, the other one, when we press green, it flashed green, didn't it? Yeah. So, I think it's doing some sort of transmitting. So, so basically, let's press the off as well. It goes green to show I press the button and then it's flashing red, continually flashing red. So that's not a happy bunny. Um, we've got no noise coming from the car, have we? No. So we are going to try and program this fob to this car. Now, the way you have to do it is you have to disconnect the power to the module in the back. But it's actually easier to pull the fuse out for the whole circuit. And then we're going to show you how to do that, where the fuse is. And then when the module, that module in the back, powers back up again, it powers back up in a learning mode. So for the first few seconds when you energise it, it's receptive to any input you get. And if you then press the off button on this, it should then accept this because it's in a very compliant learning mode. It will accept this as a new master who's commands it will obey and hopefully in doing that we will not delete this one um so we should have actually paired two of them right let's go tyler show us i'll grab the camera because you need your little yeah and a torch torch and you need the torch oh he's got the torch right so this is located in the passenger fuse box yes the passenger fuse box is located in the glove box you have to push the glove box down empty your rubbish out of it <laughs> And board. then you've got to squeeze these little squidgy things at the side here. Yeah, and, and so he's, he's, he's sort of squeezing it. So there's one. And there's one another one. one. You've got to feel around. 
and we'll show you after it comes down we'll show you what the story is there come on heave charlie mouse that sounded good go on then that's it yeah so what you're doing shine a bit of light on it for me time so you're just squeezing that little arrowhead bit there and that there you go look. right so you're doing that on both sides which will release the now when you put it back on you have to be careful with that little damping mechanism don't you right okay so inside there right let me jump on the other side right so the fuse you're looking for is fuse 27 right tyner got my finger on it he's got his finger on it he's it's colored orange. it orange right, maybe get your mitts out of the way there you go. let's have a look so there he is he's there and what's the, what it's what five amp? amp he's what sorry five amp five amp what color is he brown is. Yeah, so it's brown. Is that yet? So go on then, whip that one out. All right, now, right. So that's that. Now we'll let we'll trust Tyler to put it back in, but don't put it back in just yet because I've got to get ready because I'm it, we've got limited time, haven't we? Right, there's that. Right, hold on then. Right, so Tyler's going to plug it in. I've got the thingy. So let us know when you've got it plugged in, Tyler. He's in. He's in, right. So I'm now going to press off for five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. It's still flashing red, isn't it? Right, let go. Let's try it again. Just in case it takes a while to power. One, two. Let me try pressing the on. Whoa. Yes. Yes. I think we've done it, Tyler. Pressing buttons work. Pressing buttons in some sort of random order works. Right, close the doors, Tyler. Let's see if we can get it to... Yeah, he's just checking he's all good. Right, and let's see if we can get it to whir. So even if it doesn't turn the heating on, it will turn the vent on, won't it, we think? Yeah. Right, so here we go. On. And it was flashing red before, wasn't it? Yeah. Right, um, so one thing you can do if you've got problems is you can get the gap diagnostics tool. Now we have actually caused a little problem here by disconnecting the fuse. It seems to have upset the, the uh, system. So this is good timing. So if we go into the, so we've plugged the gap tool in down into the ODB2 port. You'll see other videos of me setting up and using the gap tool. Um, we can search for the tool. A good image on there, Tyler? Yeah. Not too much reflection. Yeah. Right. Okay. And then we can do, if we go for faults, let's have a look at what faults we got. We've got a few on this car. Don't be frightened by the number of faults. Sometimes it just gets random faults, but there is one in here. I looked at it just before we filmed this. I didn't reset anything so that I can show you all the faults we've got. So it's scanning the car's ECUs now and looking for any stored faults. Right, and the one we're looking at is in the heating and ventilation control here has got one fault. So if we go in here, so it's saying the fuel fired heater, the bus signal failure. Now that that probably coincides with the time we pulled the fuse out. Um, let's have a think to either 11, 15. So, um, yeah. So I think what it's did is it, it, it's tripped it. So let's just clear the fault now. And right, let's have a look now. So as we've got, we haven't got any fault now in the, right, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna clear all faults. Okay, let it do that. And let's see now if our remote works. I think we might have, it might have just got itself in a pickle. Now it may have cleared it if we'd have taken the car for a drive. But it's a little worrying if it if it wobbles. If you've got, I mean, the manual tells you to take the fuse out to yeah. to teach a new thing. So, so you may have to just be a little careful. Right, we'll reset this and let's we'll, we'll close and lock the car again and we'll see if we can get that key fob to work. Right, let's try our key again. So let's do on. It's requesting. Let's have a listen if we can hear anything going on. We've got our battery charger in there, that's wearing away. No, I'll stop. Right, we just thought we'd broken it. We're going, 
Well, we just tried the new key, and as you can see, it didn't work. And then me and Tyler are scratching our head. And then we tried the original key, and that didn't work either. So we're like, oh no, we've broken it. But then we remembered there was a line in the handbook, and it said the, the fuel burning heater will only start once per engine cycle to stop you flattening the battery. So, because it needs, it wants you to go for a drive before you use it, otherwise if you just keep heating, heating, and not going for a drive, you'll just drain your battery. So, we just restarted the car and did it and it worked. So now I'm going to pretend, right, so Tyler stopped it and restarted it. So now, this is the, interestingly, we've got two key rings, haven't we, Tyler? We've got the old one, which said Range Rover, and the new one we bought off eBay that says Land Rover. So we know which is the old and the new key fob. Right. So here we go, let's go on. There we go, come on baby. Oh, I heard some little relays go in the back. There we go. Oh, I can hear it. Oh yeah, listen to that. Stick the camera in there, Tyler. Whoa! Yeah, and if you have a listen down here, you can hear it exhausting. We can't see it exhausting. So there we go, that's the park heat working paired. Right, that's not the end of our video, but let's stop that, Tyler. So that's the new key paired. Stop it. Ooh. Right, right, so now, on our list, let's have a look what we're supposed to be doing. So that's a little distraction there. So we've added to the factors, we've added ignition cycle. So make sure you re-ignition. So if you're using your remote and it's not working, try just restarting your car and that will reset the ignition cap because only you'll have one park heat per ignition cap. Right. So let's go through our list, Tyler. So <laughs> we've done the key fob thingy. We've talked about that. Right, in control app. So I showed you this earlier. So if you grab the in control app, here we go. So this is the stick, he's unlocked. Right then, we want to go onto the remote. I've got to touch my ID. All right, so all you do, so this will start it for 30 minutes. So press and hold. All right, and then it's communicating with the car. Ah, oh, no. It's going to time out. It's going to time out. Why, Tyler? Look, it's going. Unable to start climate because oh, what do they say? Because the vehicle, because we haven't done an ignition cycle. But let's just let's just lock it and try again. All right, hold to start climate. It's locked now. Now this may time out because we haven't done an ignition cycle. No. The vehicle is unable to start climate. Climate, right? So let's do an ignition cycle. This is a good test, isn't it, Tyler? This is we like we like problem solving. Alright, don't trip over the battery charger. Right, we're gonna start it. Right, we're gonna change nothing else. We are gonna we're gonna lock it. We are gonna make a secondary request. Well, I've got press and hold. Here we go. Yeah, because this is where it says it's only allowed once per engine start. Yes! Going. Right, so make sure you use ignition cycle. If you think it's all working and all failed, like we have just done twice, that's how good we are, Tyler. <laughs> um, Make sure you do your ignition cycle. Make sure your windows are closed. Make sure your doors are locked. Make sure you haven't crashed your car. Make sure your battery's good. Right. So we. So is everyone happy with the in control app? Are you happy, Tyler? Yes. Right. Very happy. Very happy. Now we can stop it. This will now run for a. So to stop it, then we just there. Uh, stop it now. Unfortunately, with the app, you cannot do your time sequences. So it's literally, you have to remember in advance of going out, it won't, you can't set a time sequence or anything flash like that. Right, now the third, the third, the fifth way of 
turning on your fuel burning heater is you can get a thermo core, a TC4 Wabasto. Now, that unit's not Wabasto, that's a um, Pasture thing, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but I think it still works off the same electrical, but there is, and the other thing obviously is you, you can get aftermarket systems where people have hacked into it, and there are a few of those for sale on eBay. And I'm not gonna do a video on that, although we might get one and try. I mean, I think you could buy a relay, and I think you could actually say, hey Google, turn on the car heating, and you should be able to get that working. But we'll leave that for another play. But there we go, that is my brain dump on, um, um, but there we go, I think we've done all we wanted to do. Anything to add, Tyler? Get hot. Get hot. Or if you're hot, get cool, because it does ventilation too, Tyler, remember that. Right, have fun with that.